years of life. The years of your life shall be broken. Matthew chapter 17 verse 14. Throw to verse 21. Matthew chapter 17 verse 14. And here Jesus was the one talking. If Jesus was talking, the way you should take it should be different from the way Bishop is talking. Should be different from the way, I mean, the, uh, the way you should take it should be different from the way you take it when the apostles are talking. Jesus is the one talking here. And we look at a few things. If we are able to complete it today, fine. If we are not, we continue next Thursday. And when they were come to the multitude, now it was the multitude that were where they were, Jesus and his disciples were going to them. Then there came to him a certain man. It was not the only one, no. But it became the one that came out of the multitude to meet them. There Jesus was coming with his disciples. But the man came out of the multitude. And so the man that came out of the multitude had an identity. And so the Bible described him because again his name was not known. And so the Bible described him as a certain man. He was kneeling down to Jesus and he was saying in verse 15. Lord, have mercy on my son. Stretch your hands towards the altar. I think it should be better said in Yoruba. Satan will not suffer you with your children. You will not shed tears over your children. If you believe it, shout a loud amen. Now let me say this, even if you are not married, say amen. Even if you are a kid, say amen. All these things are compiling in your loins. So that when the children eventually begin to come, they are partakers of the prayers and the word of prophecies that have been said into your life. Therefore I say it again. By the spirit of the living God, you will not shed tears over your children. Satan will not suffer you with your children. I want you to shout it out. I receive it into me. I receive it into my system. Satan, you cannot suffer me with my children. I will not shed tears over my children. I speak the word of authority. And so shall it be established unto you. He said, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is lunatic and so vexed. Oftentimes he fall let into the fire. And oft into the water. 16. And I brought him to your disciples. And they could not cure him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then Jesus answered and said. O faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Verse 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Concerning your children, I rebuke the devil. Concerning you, I rebuke the devil. Concerning your business, the devil is rebuked. Concerning your finances, I said the devil is rebuked. If you believe it, shout three powerful amen. That's what Jesus said. Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. By the reason of the anointing in the house today, in your life the devil is departed out. I said the devil shall depart totally. He will carry his load, he's leaving you alone. Out of your business, out of your home, out of your finances, out of your situations. If you believe in shouting louder, amen. And the Bible says, and the child was killed. 
From that very hour, somebody shout hallelujah. That is authority. Then in verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Verse 20, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, are you ready to say? Have you been saying? Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Hello, your prosperity is a possibility. You getting married happily is a possibility. I said you getting your good hope is a possibility. Having a good car is a possibility. Having a good house is a possibility. You being elevated is a possibility. You moving higher is a possibility. You being promoted is a possibility. You becoming a millionaire is a possibility. You traveling on holiday to America is a possibility. You being connected to a big contract is a possibility. Say to yourself, nothing shall be impossible to me. He said, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And in verse 21, how be it? This kind go at not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now listen to me. When life's situation hits, sir, it brings man to his knees. The Bible says that the man came to him kneeling down When the situation of life hits, it brings you to a low level. And that's why Yoruba people says, if a big calamity befalls a man, small, small calamity begins to what? Makes the life of fellow a toy. When life situation hits a man, it brings the person low. For example, if you are going to somebody to borrow, do you know how money is borrowed? You will first of all sit the fellow down and analyze the problems of your life to him. Thinking that he will be convinced and therefore show you pity. At the point you begin to analyze the situation of your life to that man, you are already on your knees. Because your, your issues are your issues. Your issues are personal to you. Your issues are private. That confidential, God bless you, man. That is your issue. But when you are seeking help, when you are seeking assistance, when life has brought you low, you begin to say things that you ought not to tell anybody to people you ought not to say anything to. People that ordinarily it's like when I was still looking for printing job to do. Ah, stretch your hands towards the altar. I do not know how low that life has brought you, but you are coming back up. I'm saying it from my spirit to you. You are coming back up. I was looking for printing jobs to do. I don't want to mention the organization. Just because I was looking for printing jobs to do. Instead of talking to the MD, MD will say go and talk to somebody. And then the somebody will now say go and talk to one small fly. One small assistant there. Because I wanted the job. People that I knew in myself that shouldn't even be up to the people that I had employed as receptionist. I will begin to call them. My sister. My brother. 
just because I wanted a printing job from them. And they will now begin to say, God will help us. They will now begin to give me. That was why I left printing. I'm no longer interested in it. There are certain kind of jobs that makes you become like a beggar. Like a beggar. You will not beg to feed. I said you will not beg to feed. I said you will not beg to feed. Because the man needed assistance. Was it Jesus that told him to nail? Did Jesus ask for the story of his life? Did Jesus ask him what is doing you? Without even Jesus talking, he began to talk. He began to talk. He was not just talking, he was kneeling down. I don't know on which spot you are currently low. You are currently kneeling down. I speak by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh yeah, come back up now. Oh yeah, arise. Arise. In the name of Jesus. At the bottom of the mountain, they were met by a crowd of waiting people. That is message Bible. It says, as they approached, a man came out of the crowd and fell to his knees, begging. Shout it loud. I refuse to be a beggar. I'm no longer a beggar. I shall not beg. Me, I no go so far. I no go beg. I no go so far, oh, me, I no go. Lie, lie, I no go bear for the God of miracle, the my Baba, oh, miracle. The God of miracle. You are not singing it well. Miracle, my my. Oh yeah, me I no go so, I no go so far, I no go back. I buy your me get me I no go so. I'm a babble jo, I no go back. Why? God miracle, nam. The God of miracle, my my. So shall it be unto you. Stretch your hands toward the altar. Your season of bending low to beg is over. If you believe it, you will become it. Say it with all the seriousness in you. My season of bending to beg is over. Do you mean it? You will become it. Now listen, Jesus went to the crowd. But the man came out of the crowd. He knew what was troubling him. Jesus was the one coming to the crowd. But the man came out of the crowd. Now listen to me. It is possible to be at the side of the river and yet be dying of thirst. It is possible to be inside a room filled with food and yet be dying of hunger. You can be close to a breakthrough and yet break down. Now, it is possible for a footballer to be dribbling from, the, uh, from his own goal post and dribble everybody and get to the point of scoring goal and yet play it out. It is possible. It is possible. Jesus got to the crowd, but he took the man coming out of the crowd. Was it the only one there? When Pastor Inga came to teach us, when Jesus got to the pool at Bethsaida, and he saw a man there that has been there 38 years, and he asked the man, will that be made whole? And the man began to tell a story. And Jesus eventually healed the man. And the Bible says that in that pool lay important folks. But the question me I continue to ask is that, was that man the only one that was there? When they saw that Jesus did that, what stopped them from grabbing? 
the garment of Jesus. If you could do it for this man, you must do it for me. And Jesus did for only one person and left that place. Why? It is not you being among the crowd that will determine what. It is you coming out of the crowd. It is you coming out of the crowd. It is you coming out of the crowd. The man came out of the crowd. Jesus did not point him out. He pointed himself out. Hello? It is your turn to say things to Jesus. It is your turn. It is your turn. And that is why I pity those that are members of this church that will not join us in our every Thursday fast. I pity you. I pity you. And that is why I pity those, I'm sorry to say, I don't want to mention the name. They were telling me some people said they were living inside something. That the boss can even come further to their house to come and pick them. Nonsense. We have only said the boss should not stay in Father, should be extended to what? Each other. And then some people. Now, there are some people that will want the boss to come to the front of their house to pick them. Somebody said nonsense. They say because transport fee up is too much. What if the church does not have a bus? It takes you coming out of the crowd, man. You think things just happen? I keep saying, look at me very well, being sure. I will be too rich. You know why? I have come out of the crowd. I do what is real. There is no way the devil can put me down. It is too late. It is too late. Come out of the crowd. You are in the church. You are looking for what the church will do for you. You, what have you done for the church? How useful are you to the church? There are some people, only, the only thing they do is to come to church on Thursday because they know that even if they fasted or even if they did not fast, they will collect food. Alright? Somebody shout hallelujah. It is not the eater of the food that will be blessed. It is the provider of the food. Even in your eating, some people have been blessed. So continue to eat. Since the revelation you have is that of the eater, I must confess to you that somebody has caught the vision of being the giver. So as you are eating, the fellow is being blessed. It is not magomago. It is not awure. The more you eat, that fellow is being blessed. So that he can continue to provide for you to continue to eat. So you are eating, you are becoming fat. But the other fellow is becoming fat in Naira and in his account. So you can decide which one you want. Whether you want to become fatter in your body and grow pot belly. You know, there are some people that look like big men, but they are small. But there are some people that are very, very big, but they look like a poor person. Which one do you want? Somebody was showing us a picture on his status. He put the picture of a musician. He did his hair, put on chains, multiple chains, dressed elegantly. And he said the man was worth 26 million naira. And then he put the picture of Jeff Bezos, currently the richest man in the world. And then he appears simple, in a shirt and trouser. No chain, no wristwatch, no bangle, no any hairstyle of any class or category. He was just his normal self. And he said $26 billion. Which one would you want to become? Come out of the crowd. He pointed himself out. It is your turn to, be point, to point yourself out. By what you do. By your activity. By your... By your by, my God, how do I put it? Now, you might be in this church and be useless. 
It is not coming to church to say amen that we open doors for you. You have to provoke it. Say, I hear. Jesus is not just coming to you. Listen to me. Jesus is already with you. Say, I hear. And Jesus is with you. Say, I hear. So, breakthrough is within your reach. Make up your mind. I told you last Thursday, I mean Saturday, I'm saying it again that financial barriers are breakable. Say yes, I know. Say I believe it. And it shall be to me. So every financial barrier break in your life. Marital barriers break in your life. In the name of Jesus, delay is a form of barrier. Every barrier of delay break in your life. If you believe it, shout a louder amen. amen. So look at yourself and tell yourself, enough is enough. Say to yourself, I receive my miracles. Say to yourself, I receive my breakthrough. The man said, I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. He had issues. He did not go to Abali too. He went to disciples of Jesus. There are messages. You see the scripture? The scripture is full of messages. It all depends on what you are reading and how the Holy Spirit is interpreting to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Number one, from this verse alone, that is chapter 17 verse 16, and I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Cure him. Number one thing you should know is that if you go to any man of God and he prayed and something happens, stop glorifying them. The glory belongs to Jesus. Hello? You know why? It is good to share testimony that I had relationship with this man of God and I got this. I got that. It is good to share testimony. Somebody shout hallelujah. But what percentage of people had the testimony to share in that way? So when they pray, be healed. It is only those that are healed that will come to hear about. What about the majority that were not healed? Do they come to share testimony? And then those that became healed, we now come and be saying thank you, pastor. Every pastor has their limitations. When somebody prays and God, and that thing happens, it is just God's time for it to happen. Stop glorifying man. Number two, after you have done all, after you have gone all over the places, and you cannot see solution. Don't stop. Say I hear. Say I will not stop. The man went to Jesus' disciple. Did he stop? No. Maybe it was Jesus' disciples that he went to. And I said, now nah, I've seen the limitation of Jesus' disciples. I've been to them. They couldn't get this thing done. There are things to, for me to see do. So do not stop. Never give up. Because there is always something to be done. If your challenges persist, there is something that ought to be done that is yet to be done. So never give in to barriers and say to yourself, I've been here, I've been here, I've done this, I've done that, I'm no longer going to try again. No, that's not the way it works. The man never gave up. The man never gave up. Now look at it this way. As at the time he was going to see the disciples of Jesus, maybe it was a case between him and the disciples alone. But this time around, he was in the middle of the crowd. So there were many people for Jesus to attend to. Never give up. You have tried. Never give up. You have prayed. Never give up. You have done your giving. As seed so. Never give up. You have done praises. Never give up. You are fasted. Never give up. 
You have done anointing. Never give up. Say, I will never give up. You may have attended the best of church programs where the preacher was filled out fire or he carried fire anointing and yet your mountain stood firm. Still, don't give up because the best is for the ever seeking. And when I was writing this, I remember the motto of the secondary school I attended. Great Lennon Jubilee High School. The greatest secondary school in the world. Don't compare with your own. Somebody shout hallelujah. If the name of your school is sweeter than our own, the motto of our school is sweeter than our own. The best is for the ever seeking. That was the man. That was what the man did. The fact that he went to the disciples of Jesus and he didn't get the situation did not get him dissuaded. He did not lose hope. He still went. Now, as at the time Jesus was there, were the disciples not with him? They were with him. He did not say, no, I'm not going to try again. He never gave up. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Now, because of that, you will still marry. Don't consider your age. You will still get that married to be done. If that is your priority. And you will marry well. You will still carry your babies. No matter the delays. You will carry your baby. If that is your desire. You will be prosperous. The number of years you have spent in poverty. I don't bloody care. What I know is that if you don't give up. You will still be prosperous. Is anybody listening to me? Your breakthrough is around the corner. Your breakthrough is possible. You will succeed. You have been trying. You have not been succeeding. Forget about the number of times you have tried. You will succeed. Maybe they have been leaving you behind or beside to promote others. But don't worry. Your own promotion is coming. Now, number three. After you have gone everywhere and there is no solution, you know what God is telling you? He's telling you that your solution is within you. It means that you're so sick. Somebody shout hallelujah. When I was passing through, one of the mechanics that was fixing my car told me that there was a powerful man of God in a prayer we should go. I'm a researcher by nature. And so I followed him. But when we were going, I told him that the man was not going to say anything. I wrote a proposal to cover almost all the states of the country with my radio program. And I was looking for a telecommunication outfit, a major one in this country. To finance, and I was spoken to their to their to their director of marketing, and he told me that I should bring my proposal. He said, "But he had already retired, and that if he should be presenting that quantum of proposal in retirement, you know, when you retire, your letter has been sent in, but you are still just working." Pending the time you will go on your retirement leave and never to come back. He said they had even brought somebody from a foreign country to replace him. He said, But I should go ahead and bring my proposal. That he will present the proposal, but he cannot push it. So if the new person feels that the proposal should go, that it will go. But he promises that he will present it. And so I now wrote the proposal. I now carried it. Show me, they said the man is prophet. Let us go. Whether he will pray on it. And when we got there, the way and manner I saw things done. Hello. When you go here and here and you did not see solution, what Jesus is telling you is that the solution is within you. Is in your hand. Is anybody listening to me? When I got there, me that I knew the challenges I was facing, 
The man did not tell me anything. The only thing he was telling me is that I should take care of my wife. Did you complain to the man that I was not taking care of? He said, I should take care of my wife. And I said, was my wife complaining that I was not taking care of her? Is that an issue here? The major issue that brought us there, at the end, he said, ah, the thing we go through. He said, but somebody will link, link me up. He said, the person that will be linking me up will want to take a higher percentage of whatever that comes out of it. I said, make the man even take, but let him link me up. It is not the number of places that you went to. When you have gone around, you know, there are some people, they know how to pray. I've said it before, when they go to Holy Ghost camp during the eight days before COVID, as they go to Holy Ghost camp and they are coming back, they will stop over at where? Prayer mountain. As if there was no God and all the prayers they have prayed in a day was a waste. They now come to top it up. Now when you have gone to all those places and you still did not see solution, what Jesus is telling you that your solution is within you. I said your solution is still within you. So stop looking for solutions outside because the solution is in you. How? Matthew chapter 17 verse 19. Then came the disciples of Jesus apart and said, why could we not cast him out? In verse 20, and Jesus said unto them, because of your word, unbelief. And that's why I said, the solution is in your hand. It's within you. Your solution is not in the mouth of any pastor. Not in the mouth of any prophet, I'm sorry to say. If the faith you, ha you have is the faith of a prophet, you will be disappointed. I told you of a prophet back in days that gave me an anointing oil and he said, I should anoint my head. If I get to hear that they are killing there, I should go. Nothing will happen to me. Only one day, armed robbers attacked me. And then they took my vehicle key and then they didn't take the, key, uh, the car actually. And I took Okada from their home. And I called him the following morning. He said, ah! He said, they can take away my property, but they will not touch me. And I said to myself, if they touched me and my enemy is dead, where will I see you to tell you that this is what has happened to Somebody shout hallelujah. The man is long dead, I'm alive. What if it is his faith that I carry? Now that he's dead, my faith dies. Stop believing in any prophet that until you see him, the solution of your life cannot be. And that is what Jesus is saying here. That when you have gone around for all the prayers and the anointing services and whatever, and they have said that if you want to live to 1,000 years, you should sow 10,000 naira. And they have told you all those gimmicks to collect your money, and yet you did not see anything. Is telling you that your solution is within. Somebody shout, Hallelujah. He now said, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, he now begins to analyze the process through which your barriers can be broken. These are the processes. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. When you say, not when you say amen to somebody's prayer. When you say, not when you are receiving the prophecy from any pastor or any, any prophet. When you say, when you believe, when you have faith, when you say, when you believe, when you have faith, when you say, in other words, the reason why barriers are still standing against you is because of your unbelief, 
It is because you have no faith. It is because you are not saved. Pure and simple. This is scripture. So no matter how long the barrier has stood against you, never cast away your faith. Never cast away your faith. What are the problems that some people have? You have had migraine for a number of years. You now have taken the migraine to be your migraine. The moment the migraine comes, you say, this is my migraine. Like somebody that is somewhere looking at me. It is this my migraine. It is this my back ache. It is this my leg. It is this my eye. It is this my ulcer. It is this my heart problem. Ha, huh, sister. Ulcer, your ulcer. Your back ache. Now, you have owned the back ache. It now belongs to you. You now own the. That is unbelief. You have, <laughs> you have accepted it as part of yourself. You have taken it as a property. Eh? This is my penniless. I'm a broke. I'm broke than a broker. You, now, you have stayed too long in that situation. You have, you have become accustomed to it. You have become used to it. You have accepted it as of it. Hello, church. Is anybody listening to me? That migraine is a stranger in your body. It is not your migraine. That your delay is not this your delay. It is a stranger in your system. Somebody shout hallelujah. That ulcer is not your ulcer. You are not born with it. It is not going to kill you. That poverty is not your poverty. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Believe. Say I hear. Believe. Say I believe. For how long until the barrier is broken? Continue to believe. Hold your faith together. Never be discouraged. Never be oppressed. Another condition. He says, ye shall say. But unfortunately, what have you been saying? This is my back ache. Me. Why were you not in church? It is because of this my back ache. That is what you have been saying. And that is what we are getting. Why are you not in church? I don't just have any money. I'm so broke. That is why you are broke. The church made a provision between that your place and where the church bus parks. What stops you from trekking to that side? And you are telling me that the church should now send a vehicle to come to front of your house to pick you. Very soon, when the church even does that, when you are supposed to be entering the bus, you will be in the bathroom. And when they knock on your door, you will say, please wait for me. Oh, I'm having my bath. And when you have done that, wait for me. Oh, I'm still dressing up. That is why people are low. There are certain things that God visits. There are certain things that God sees to bless. The Bible says, ye shall say. The question I've brought to you this evening is that what are you saying? Hello? It's all about what you say. All about what you say. So touch that backache and say, backache, you are not my portion. Touch your head. Migraine is not my portion. Touch your belly. Ulcer is not my portion. Touch your leg. Egg, not my portion. Touch your pocket. Poverty is not my portion. <laughs> it is all in what you say. The Bible says you shall say. So never stop saying positive things. You said yesterday, you didn't see nothing. Say it again today. Wake up in the middle of the night. Begin to say. Somebody shout hallelujah. See, 
By the time I begin to do evangelism in this area, they will listen to me. Very easy. Do you know that I can get to the traffic light there? And maybe with the car I brought to church now, I can carry this flyer. Ten. And I can put 5,000 naira and dash those guys that are there. And say, I'm expecting you in church on Sunday. I have evangelized. They will look at the kind of vehicle that I have brought. But if you are in an Okada and you are doing that, nobody will listen to you. I told you I went to the suburb of where we stayed. And I parked my vehicle. And I began to talk. And people gathered around me to listen to me. Poverty does not glorify God. You have said it again. Continue to say it. 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 It's only a matter of time. It shall be according to what you say. Wake up in the middle of the night and begin to say it. Where you want to get to, begin to say it. Begin to say it. When you are in the bathroom, begin to say it. My womb cannot be buried. No! Begin to call the children to be. Come on. Keep saying it. On your way to work. Keep saying it. In verse 21. He now said, How be it? This kind goeth not out, but will buy what? And what? <laughs> you can see. There are some people they say they have us and they cannot fast. But Jesus said, how to get also out of your system is to do what? The higher the mountain, the intense your prayers must be. Your fasting is never a waste of time. Jesus said that that is what is required. Rise up on your feet.